Coming up in this FinCast, I will show you a cichlid that is no bigger than that and absolutely beautiful. Oh, we use the uh, extreme fish food quite a bit in our shop. Uh, we like it very much. Uh, it's very palatable for the fish. We, uh, a lot of times fish that don't eat other things will eat the pellets, which is a great thing. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast, and today I've got for you a great update on my huge driftwood project aquarium. It's a 55-gallon aquarium. I'm doing a bunch of different things in there, including a new kind of fertilizer, a new kind of dosing system, and now I've added two pairs of dwarf cichlids. In fact, two pairs of epistogrammas. One is an epistogramma hongsloy, and the other is an epistogramma McMasteri. Don't let those big Latin names scare you. Basically what I'm talking about is little tiny cichlids about that big. In fact, one of the uh, females that came in uh, from my wholesaler is only about that big. In fact, I would say that it's actually smaller than my neon tetras. So we're talking about very small cichlids in a 55 gallon tank. But what's so cool, and, and, and you know that I'm a proponent of small fish in a big tank, is that they they interact with the aquarium as if they're in the wild. There's, there's a lot of swimming for a little tiny fish to do when you've got lots of plants and driftwood and some current and that sort of thing and some other fish. Uh, it's really neat to see the way that they interact. So I'm always a proponent for a small fish in a big tank and these certainly qualify as small fish. But what's so cool, uh, if you've uh, listened to some of my other fin casts before, is that I always think of cichlids as thinking fish. And if you're watching this under my Cichlid Adventures banner, then you know that uh, you're also a cichlid fan. And you know, cichlids kind of stop to pause and they'll look and they'll think and they'll wonder and then they'll take a bite and then they move on as opposed to something like a tetra, which, you know, I like all these fish, but a tetra or a barb that tend to just kind of swim out in the open and swim back and forth in the water. Uh, and a cichlid is there and it's interacting with its environment. And, and uh, I honestly believe that cichlids are smart if there is such a thing than other fish and they certainly are more interesting to watch because of the way that they in fact I'm kind of looking over because I'm I'm looking at them right now but the way they interact with their environment so uh, today I want I'll be telling you a little bit more about these two pairs of uh, of these dwarf cichlids little tiny epistogrammas uh, from South America and they live in the Amazon River Basin and these have been in the, in the hobby for a very long time. You don't see them often at your local pet stores. You can find them online pretty easily. And this is so this is the Hong Sloy and the McMaster Eye. So uh, let me tell you a little bit more, first of all, about the aquarium. The plants are growing like crazy using this dosator that I got from uh, from Germany and uh, this is products from Dennerly so I'm using in the dosator uh, just a sort of a all-around um, fertilizer it's one of these fertilizers you can put in your tank and it's got all the required nutrients in it as opposed to dosing individual uh, things like nitrate and, and phosphate and phosphorus and all the different things uh, iron uh, I'm just using this one all-around fertilizer and it's working very well these plants are getting taller they're crisp they uh, have no algae on them uh, tested the water there's zero phosphates in the fish tank other than wiping it down uh, for the reason of photography for this fin cast, I've only had to wipe the glass once since I set this tank up, which is amazing. That means basically that there's no algae growing in this tank. It is just a very happy aquarium. So, update number one is that these uh, products from Dennerly are working very well with my low-tech approach to this aquarium. I've got gas CO2 all set up to go and so far I haven't needed it. I'm using the Dennerly Carbo Elixir as a replacement for gas CO2 and that's working very well also. So plants doing very well. The fish, as I've told you, are, are doing great. The snakeskin barbs are very happy. Uh, I have added a, a school of threadfin rainbows. They're doing very well. In fact, I don't even know if I have any pictures. The other fish in the tank uh, including all of my quarry cats and all of my plecos, just as, as happy as they could be. So now let me tell you a little bit more about the hogsloy epistogramma. Again, these are little tiny fish, and here's what I know about them. 
The Hongsloy epistogramma is from the eastern parts of Colombia, and again, these are uh, going to be a very colorful freshwater little fish. The strains are entirely domestic, the result of line breeding, as I mentioned a moment ago. Um, so it is. Uh, this is going to be a fish that is much more colorful than the wild variants that, that someone might come across occasionally in the hobby. But uh, the ones that I have, I'm quite sure, are not wild. These are, these are uh, line bred, which means they've been grown in captivity and then selected for the best color and so forth and so on. So that's what you're looking for. The Hong Sloy is, uh, again, just like most uh, pistogrammas, it likes that acidic water and it likes uh, soft water as well. And as much as I like the Hong Sloy, so far I think I like the McMaster Eyes better, and here's why. So this is also called McMaster's Dwarf Cichlid, but it's the Epistogramma McMasteri, and this particular variety is the redneck version, and that's for obvious reasons. Uh, my aquarium has a pH of about 7.4, which is just a little bit higher than what's recommended. Uh, this is a cichlid that probably is going to want a pH in the range of 6.4 to 7.1, so mine is a little bit high, but again, I'm not trying to breed this fish. I just want it to be happy in the aquarium and so far that seems to work. Uh, this is a fish that uh, will typically live for three to five years. Uh, it is considered a peaceful South American community fish uh, but it can be aggressive if a pair sets up and they do start breeding. They, they will do well with other species of a similar size uh, that require basically obviously the same water parameter so that's not a big deal. Um, and it's recommended that in a smaller tank especially that you not keep uh, more than one pair because they can be aggressive but again I haven't seen uh, in the early stages in my tank any aggression between the Hongsloys and the McMasterize, the rednecks. Uh, this is a, a fish that obviously likes lots of hiding places, it likes shade, it likes cover, it likes plants. Um, people who are trying to breed will drill a, a small hole in a coconut shell or a flower pot and the female will lay eggs in the flower pot and in fact the female can be so secretive that you won't even know that you've got fry until they emerge from the the coconut shell, the flower pot, the pipe, whatever it is. Um, obviously, that's not something that works because my, uh, from, for me, because my aquarium is a display aquarium in my huge driftwood tank, and so I want everything to be pretty. I'm not going to be putting a flower pot in there or even a coconut shell. I may add a little bit more driftwood that's got some crevices, but they're uh, they're finding crevices and places to hide in and among the plants. They do like shade, by the way. So obviously, that's uh, that's working out very well in this aquarium. But this is a, a fairly easy fish to keep. Again, it comes from South America in the Amazon River Basin and it uh, does like a, a lower pH, it likes softer water, it likes driftwood, it likes plants, and a temperature of between. Of course, epistogrammas are cichlids and so they'll take dry foods, but live or frozen foods blood worms, brine shrimp, mice, mosquito larvae uh, are going to be better foods, but I don't know how many people actually have the time to, to do that, uh, but these are, these are fish that, that will take pellets, and uh, a nutritionally balanced pellet is, is usually a good food, and I haven't had any trouble with that, but occasionally I will throw a little, little bits of frozen food in there for them. Uh, how to tell the difference between the male and the female? The males will be larger and more colorful. The females will have a little bit of a yellowish background color, and of course the male's fins are going to be much more beautiful and robust and larger. Uh, these fish are cave brooders. Again, you want that uh, soft, acidic to neutral water, but they do quite well in typical community aquariums with a neutral pH and decent clean water with some hiding places. If you're interested in learning more about my huge driftwood project, I've created a playlist online with several videos just related to the setup and, and the care of this tank and some of the other the fertilizers and so forth that I mentioned from Dennerly. So just click on the card over my shoulder and that'll show you that uh, playlist and you can learn a little bit more about how I've uh, set up this tank and really uh, see how I've achieved the success that I have. I'm extremely happy with this aquarium.
I did take a deep dive with my GoPro and to show you how clear the water is in this aquarium, you could look through the four feet of the tank and read a newspaper on the other side. And that's sort of my measure of how clear a tank is. So this tank is doing extremely well. And again, check out the playlist and I'll show you a number of videos, including how I set it up, the fertilizers I'm using, how we uh, are dosing the fertilizers and, and the fish, of course. And there's also a nice special video in there on this snakeskin barb, which a lot of people have been very interested in. So there it all is. Hope you're enjoying this huge driftwood project. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next FinCast. Mm -hmm.